do you consider yourself an optimist or a pessimist? Your very life could depend on your answer. Are you an optimist or a pessimist? Recently, a, a psychiatric study was uh, released from the Netherlands, and this psychiatric study finds that optimists stay healthy longer than those in other groups. Optimistic participants who had a 55% lower risk of death from all causes, and optimistic participants had a 23% lower risk of death from heart failure. Very interesting. Whether you're an optimist or a pessimist, it could affect your life. The Bible is filled with examples of, of and exhortations to optimism. Seeing the glass as half full rather than as half empty. St. Paul in this epistle, the eighth chapter of Romans, says that we should consider that the sufferings of the present are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed in us. That's a very optimistic, uh, very hope-filled view of life, that our sufferings are only for a moment, and they're nothing as compared to what God has in store for us. In other words, yes, life has its share of sufferings, but that's not the end of the story. There's something positive even about some of the hardships we face. An optimist sees the trials of life as stepping stones rather than as stumbling blocks. A pessimist, on the other hand, sees everything as a stumbling block rather than a stepping stone. My sisters and brothers, I think it's true that all of us from time to time find ourselves stumbling and bumbling about through life because we may be caught in the grip of pessimism. Pessimism, in the end, is not cr Christian, really, because there is an optimism that's grounded in the gospel and the message of Jesus Christ. Another study uh, in a journal of the American Board of Family Medicine finds that there are many things that you can do to increase your life expectancy. Exercise, we all know that. That'll increase your longevity. Eating well, we all know that. That'll increase our, our longevity. Taking your medication if you're sick, that'll increase your longevity. And then fourthly, what in, will increase your longevity beyond eating, exercising, taking your medication? What do you think it is? Going to church. Believe it or not from the study of the Journal of the American Board of Family Medicine. Going to church extends your life. Studies show that attendance at church helps to make meaning, to bring meaning into your life. Faith brings meaning into your life. Worshiping brings meaning into your life. And that mediates a positive health effect. It's important to pass that on. Mention that to your relatives who are on the golf course this morning, that uh, golf won't really increase their life, but if they were at church with you this morning, they may have a longer life. Optimism begins with an appreciation of the gifts that God has given us. When was the last time I slowed down enough and asked myself, can I list the blessings that God has given me and and when was the last time I thanked the Lord for the blessings that he's given me? Every optimist begins where he is, or where she is, where his or her gifts are, and goes from there. A pessimist gets nowhere because he never recognizes the blessings he has. We don't need more strength, someone once said. We don't need more ability or greater opportunity. What we need to use is what we already have. The gospel tells us and reminds us to use what we have when the Lord tells the story, the parable of the sower and the seed. He says, some seed falls on rocky grounds. There's little soil and no depth. But some seed falls on rich soil and produces great fruit. 
What is this rich soil? Rich soil is using the blessings that God has given us. The rich soil is our lives in which God has planted these many blessings. God asks us to let those seeds, those blessings grow in a rich soil of a faith-filled life. Faith is like the soil in which these blessings grow. God wants us to be aware of the blessings that flow from him into our lives. If we trust in God's blessings, and we're open to, to using those blessings, God will use those blessings to grow within us in surprising and beautiful ways. Optimism is important, no matter what the situation is. There's a story told about a priest by the name of Father Johnson. And Father Johnson answered the phone one day. The phone rang, and he answered. He said, St. Mary's, this is Father Johnson. Is this Father Johnson? Yes, as I said, this is Father Johnson. Is this St. Mary's? Yes, this is St. Mary's. Well, this is the Internal Revenue Service, and can you help us? I can. Do you know a man by the name of Bill Wilcox? Is he a member of your parish? Yes, he is. Did he donate $10,000? He will. <laughs> That's optimism. Nothing is impossible with God. That's the heart of the gospel. Saying impossible, being a pessimist, puts us on the losing side. If you dream big, believe big, and pray big, big things will happen. Most great people of history succeeded in doing what was considered impossible by the pessimists. The soil in which we plant our blessings is a soil of faith, rich with an understanding of the greatness of God. Look every day at the size and the greatness of our God. Count the many blessings you have received, as I must. The way we see God impacts the kind of life we have. Health, happiness, good relationships, family, employment, the healings of the memories, the wounds of the past, the opportunities presenting we are presented with in the present and the future, hope for a better tomorrow, all these flow from an understanding that God is bigger than the problems we face and that with hope and confidence and trust in him, he can bring good out of everything. And the sufferings, as St. Paul says, of this moment are as nothing compared to the glory that God has in store for us who trust him. The gospel message is that. Look to God, believe God, trust God, who is bigger than all the problems we face. I need to remind myself of that. When I turn to God, when I see an opportunity in every problem, when I see opportunities in every problem and not problems in every opportunity, my life changes. When I realize, and as you realize, that you are not insignificant, that you are significant and important to God, then we never view our existence as if God had no investment in us. God has an investment in you. He didn't create us by accident. He's invested everything in you and me. He invested his very life on the cross. Optimistic faith, that's what faith is, always optimistic. It can save your soul and my soul as well as prolonging our lives. There's an old tune, an uh, evangelical hymn, Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. I taught that to the kids in, in the school. It's a, something we should always remember, not just children, but all of us, no matter how old we are, to count our blessings. Count our many blessings, name them one by one. Count our many blessings, see what God has done. Simple little tune that I like, and I think summarize 
the gospel today. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, tell them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Amen.